don't know me, I'm your brother. I was raised here in this living hell. You don't know my kind in your world. Fairly soon, time will. Telling me the things you're gonna do for me. Everybody. I ain't blind and I don't like what I think I see. Taking it to the streets. It's good to see you, my friend. Welcome to week eight. And um, Journey to Service is just rolling along each week. and. This week, I noticed, actually, it was your last, at least the last video that I watched. I don't know if you posted since Thursday. I know that you're back on YouTube. Woohoo! But um, I noticed on Thursday that your message was gentle, genuine, and there was a lot of gratitude in it. But it also felt like something happened, something shifted, something moved. It just seemed like something happened so that it perpetuated the kind of message you gave. Are you able to share a little bit more about that or do you see it the way I see it? Maybe, maybe it's just my own perspective on that. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting one. You know, like, I think it's personal. Each of us, you know, gets that feeling any, every once in a while of, a, of what I continue to call a perpetual shift. Like the you know, the shifting is continuing to happen. We are evolving in consciousness as we go along in time. And uh, yeah, this last week for me was just, a, it was pretty relaxing, you know, and there was messages flying all over the place in the banking industry. It was, and every time I got something, like we're, we're looking at, you know, uh, monetizing instruments and bringing, redeeming old bonds and stuff like that, you know, in my, business end of things you know and it it's been a couple of years that I've been at this like I I started in the banking probably three years ago I guess I think it's about three maybe three and a half and I've never felt in that realm so much synchronicity and so much uh I don't know what words to use but I'm going to use the word love (laughs) <laughs> in the banking world in this last week it's just been really cool to see guys coming around you know like we we generally are always sending messages as brokers to to try to um and try has been the word to try to open new credit lines and stuff like that but in the last year and a half nothing's really gone on and everybody says the same thing it's it's due to the fact that the governments have stepped in and just said no don't worry about it we're gonna run everything you know but that was that last week showed us that that ain't gonna happen anymore i mean it's been exposed and the whole idea of oh medical this and medical that um you know walking here around calgary and seeing the the um ahs vehicles like these brand new vehicles i don't know how the hell (laughs) like where's the money coming from for everything you know the things that go over your mouth the the things that go in your arm there's so many things that are coming and coming through this government organization and kind of getting pretty obvious to everybody by now isn't it you know that that creation of credit is just very very easy and you know the story that i tell about okay if you're if you're using bonds to kick up the qe or the central bank easing quantitative easing or central bank easing who is it that you're in debt to like who is it that you know (laughs) is really the creditor here in this situation gosh i i gotta just one more before i'll get you into the conversation again but i was watching some old movies this afternoon nice rain coming down here in calgary i went for a walk this morning but it's been raining all day. It's just beautiful. So I watched a couple 1940s romantic comedies with Loretta Young. Oh, my God, what a beauty in the 1940s. One of them was about communist, a guy that 
was a communist eh? and he was going to hide out in her. She was the, she was the banker's wife. Okay. <laughs> and this, this communist shot off his little finger because he was eat, drinking his tea like this in a restaurant. And this communist guy shot his finger off him. And then he hid in, in her house. I don't know if he knew it was her house or not. Oh gosh, what a beautiful little movie, you know, but it was just, it was all about the banker in the middle and then the communists and the capitalists on either side, you know? And in the end, this communist, the, the wife says, Loretta Young says to him, well, buddy, or, you know, I forget what his name was, Paul, I think, Paul was his name. Paul, there's only two kinds of people. It's not about communism and capitalism. There's just men and women. <laughs> and I thought, man, that little movie was so full of little tidbits of gems, I'll call it, you know, of information. But yeah, just again, going back to the whole idea that communism and capitalism aren't the thing here. It's about money creation, and that's all it's about. It's about who creates and manipulates and exploits the currency, you know? And yeah, yeah and I'm just wondering too, the, um, it seems everything that you talked about about that movie and that scene that you just mentioned seemed to be like a, a microcosm of all the things that we've been talking about for the last few weeks between capitalism, communism, and you know who you in debt to. And it just sounds like you described it perfectly. It's 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 basically the way I see it is serendipitous that you saw that after you've been talking about that for the last several weeks. Is that am I accurate with that? <laughs> Brother, that's the kind of stuff that's happening for a lot of people that I know. And yes, I've said it a long time. I live in heaven and little miracles like that come into my life. Like how the hell I rem bumped into that movie is beyond me. You know, I was just kind of flicking through some channels and it was the second one I watched. It wasn't the, there was two hour and a half long movies. The first one was pretty cute. It was the same actors. And then YouTube just went right into this second one. And I thought, Oh, yeah, I'm going to watch that. And it was just the perfect message at the perfect time just before the show today. Oh, so it was on YouTube. So, well, you know what that is. It's a YouTube algorithm. That's doing it all for you. <laughs> you see? It's the AI. Quantum... AI knows you really well. Exactly. And I've talked about that this week in our couple of video interviews, one with Hamid, and then I kind of did a little one on my own the other day talking about it as well, where the algorithms and the quantum system has always been there. When we recognize it for what it is, you know, we can get, we can infiltrate it with the good, with the love. And then it feeds back to us with that good and love. You see, it's, it's been used in the past to, to divert mankind into the idea of terror and anger and, you know, war and all that stuff that's pumped through that machine right but when you use it the other way and start to just say okay i'm thinking loving things today i'm going to hit this alexa cella music and listen to that for a little while and then all of a sudden another gratitude message comes up behind it and then alan watts pumps in you know like it's just one thing after another and and that's what happened even with that movie today so it's energy it's hard to explain and people think you're nuts if you talk about it that way but but really and truly William you you nailed it it's it it's there for us to to use the same as it was there for you know some kind of nefarious characters to use and they're they can't overrun us anymore you know like it algorithms can pick up the good and the bad okay or the not so good whatever you want to, however you want to put it but when you keep pumping the good into it and thinking in loving ways and just hitting the button that says oh i want to watch that that's about loving things romantic comedy that looks good to me and it just keeps feeding you and your brain is absorbing it right yeah well i'm going to bring us back into 3d a little bit because sure. uh, <laughs> I, I, I broke I broke tradition here. Usually, the very first question I always ask you is, "How did it go this week? Uh, what kinds of things happened out there on the campaign trail, if I can call it that, at this point uh, this week for you?" Sure. Well, you know, pretty relaxed. I, I I'm getting more people 
honking and waving now because the character in the get up, of course, you know, like more people are starting to recognize. There's a guy that stopped me on the train pad. I was on the phone and another girl crossed the street waving at the same time. And he says, you still running from air? I didn't know who the hell he was. I said, of course, what the hell do you think? <laughs> well, I haven't got my name in yet, but that's, that's just part of the process. You know, I'm not doing this in a traditional manner. I'm doing this where it comes to me, you know, okay, now's the time where, you know, it's, it's just, uh, I don't know, accepting the moment, living under conscious knowledge, I call it, L-U-C-K. You got to just kind of, <laughs> you got to be a little lucky sometimes. All right. You said something very interesting there. You know, you said um, L-U-C-K and then what it stood for. But I, I remember some of the videos that you were on, uh, wasn't, wasn't this year, I think it was late last year, where you, um, you know, you talked a fair bit about different words meaning different things. And I thought to myself, um, that would be an interesting place to go uh, and talk about that a little bit. And that you, you called it alchemy. Um, how did you get introduced to alchemy? And, and, and where's, where does it hold a place for you right now in your life? Yeah, it was probably about a year ago that we really started to look at, you know, that, well, maybe more than a year, but the, the whole idea of authority and autograph and authorization all starting with au right and then just kind of added to that as we've you know many many of my videos talk that way and alchemy is something that's always been part of um i'll, I'll call it the intelligentsia or the academia end of humanity you know like the people that were kind of figuring things out a little bit they oftentimes you know, use that. And, and then we can talk about it as if it's magic, or as people will refer to black magic to kind of screw with people's heads, so psychology wise, you know, but alchemy to me is the definition that I ran into when I saw the word alchemy was bringing the element of love into the chemical, you know, aspect of things. So again, it kind of relates to the algorithms that we were talking about earlier and how we can, if we're thinking in terms of love, when we bring in the idea of, of autographs and agreements, AU and AG being gold and silver, we can start to think in, in uh, sharing manners and uh, I don't know, I had three ssg this afternoon what were they sharing giving i can't remember the other s but it was i was thinking in terms of letters and 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 uh i guess some alchemy in there again but it was um when you bring that into the whole equation rather than hoarding or investing or speculating like you know that we've done in the capitalist mindset for many years you, you start to open up and see that abundance is the truth. You know, there is no, nothing but, and we create everything, whether it be individually creating our reality due to our perception of what we see, or humanity on a collective level, creating a more abundant, oh, not a more abundant because it is abundant, but a more conscious and a more loving and caring and sharing of civilization and that's what's shifted William you know like uh, <laughs> the last week or so I've just I see nothing but you know so is it all about me no it's about the people that are sharing with me and I'm getting it back from them too is that a reflection of the people that I've brought into my life hey you can say whatever you want but my goodness it's if you don't feel it out there this last week, I don't know where you're at. You know, like it's, it's been an amazing week. So your, your comments on that video on Thursday, for example, that wasn't based on a particular event or anything then. It was just what you were noticing and, and kind of feeling back from other people and just, I guess, your, your general energy about things. Is that accurate? Yeah, various events. I mean, you know, there's no doubt that we're, we're hearing and, don't get me wrong, I've been saying it and hearing it for many, many weeks right now that 
the transition to quantum banking or quantum banking system is happening faster and faster. And, and it, it, it already did happen, you know, like there are, there are transactions that are, that are happening and they're based on this quantum banking system. So quantum banking, I'll use that term because a lot of people still want to use the quantum financial, but financial to me still goes back to the idea of, of, you know, interest and those kind of silly things, you know? <laughs> so, you know, I could call it quantum funding system and keep the QFS in, but quantum banking seems to feel right to me. I, I like the idea of banks because they, they guide the flow. Okay. Rather than, damn the flow you know like the banks are there to guide the flow and and if it flows over well that's okay then the bank gets a little wider you know like it's <laughs> banks aren't a, such a bad thing so quantum banking seems to resonate for me and you know we've heard that there's well over 100 banks mostly the so-called central banks that are now ready and operating under the quantum system and is that something that happened in a technological manner or is that something that consciousness has came, come into the scene and quantum referring to that consciousness? So the people that are in the banking system at, this, at these upper levels are now thinking in terms of project funding rather than how much can I get, you know, and I'm, if anybody asks me that in the dozens of communications that I get every week now, like it's, oh, how much is the dinar going to be? Or how much can we get out of these bonds? I'm like, you'll get all that you deserve. You know, you'll get all that you want. If you're thinking in terms of project funding and sharing and consciousness, if you're thinking in terms of speculation and investment, you might not get fuck all. <laughs> excuse my language but that system is what has been overridden that system of thinking you see yeah now i would if, if someone was watching this video and they you know they pretty much watch television for their source of information um what you're what you're talking about may seem foreign or like a different language completely because i don't imagine that there's a lot of talk on mainstream media about you know this quantum thing um so where where are you getting this this content this information from are you are you able to share anything around that to help other people who are trying to get in sync with what you're saying as to where is randy getting this from okay now we're gonna really throw it out there okay because it's coming from dna divine neural activation <laughs> so when you when you attune yourself to divine activation okay you're seeing the good in everyone and everything every day okay so when i listen to the people that i'm working with in the banking field right i'm i'm seeing them shift into this goodness and into this love and into this idea of sharing rather than speculation and hoarding and you know how much for me you know it's i've i've seen that for months now but man the last week it's just been beautiful to watch and beautiful to un unfold because i'm seeing transactions happen now that you know has it been into the bank account for our um dow energy foundation yet not yet but it's coming and when it comes, it'll be fine. And I'll be just relaxed. It's not going to be, oh, finally celebration. No, it's just, it was intended. It was the way it was supposed to be. And that's, that's another thing that, you know, I mentioned Alan Watts earlier. And Alan Watts is one of my favorites. But a couple of his videos just popped into my reality this week. And one of them talks about how you think that you're, you're in control of everything that's going on in this vessel of yours really you know like you think you you're uh, causing yourself to breathe you know you can speed it up or stop and take a deep breath or something but it's happening okay everything's happening <laughs> like, it's just happening so if we if we think that we're in control of it 
then we're going to get ourselves into a bind. If we just let it happen and accept and surrender to it and, and think nothing but good thoughts about everyone and everything every day, you'd be surprised at the divine neural activation or the ooh, messages from God. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. Hey. Hold on there. Hold on. Hold on. Guys. All right. Okay. How are we gonna how are we going to get enough Calgarians to believe what you're talking about? I mean, I'm thinking this is a cowboy and he's starting to sound a little bit like somebody who wears wings and flies around and you know he's completely there. Oh and is Calgary ready for you? Of course. <laughs> of course they are. And you know, it's just like everybody's doing it already. If they stop and just shut their mind off, they'll know that they're creating their own reality, no matter what. And they can explain it in whatever way they want or try to not explain it, it's up to them. But each one of us is, is ultimately, ultimately responsible for where we are right here and now. So once you get to that point of, of surrender to something that's already happening, okay, then all of a sudden, holy cow, like I have power. I have the ability to influence that with my words, with my actions. And that's what, you know, the people that I work with, including yourself, William, <laughs> admit it or not, are doing. We're, we're taking action to, to uh, enhance this ascension process, which is what's going on right now. You're adjusting my reputation here, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to be the neutral, calm, level-headed party here. Isn't that what broadcasters or interviewers are supposed to be like? <laughs> You're not supposed to be anything because it's just <laughs> happening. <laughs> obviously, obviously, you know, the whole conversation today has been transition. Things are changing. Things are definitely yeah. changing. Energy is changing. What people are thinking and doing and, and how they're being is changing. Um, did, did was there any point in your journey where you noticed something like really flipped for you from because i mean like you said when you were in not in this show but in previous interviews you said you know when you were younger you you got yourself into a few you know fisticuff uh, situations there and got a few teeth bashed in and smacked a few heads while you're at it but i mean people were to see you now and they would say i don't think that's the same guy i mean how what's he talking about he doesn't look like he would you know hurt a fly so something changed between that and where you are now so was was there any point where something like flipped majorly or was this more of a gradual thing gradual thing william you know like it's it's perfect perfection moving towards completion that's what god is you know like it's it's just uh it's an evolutionary process there's no doubt in my mind that we're evolving on a on a uh and consciously evolving i don't want to get into darwinism or anything like that you know we got other people that can talk about that stuff you know like i'm good with the with the consciousness evolution okay and the and the rising of consciousness and i'll keep repeating that word over and over again because that's what it's about when you that word and the word creative are two mega words to, that I'm going to continue to use in this process of the Merrillty candidacy, which is only going to be a short period of my life, probably shorter than most want to think, but I'm just going to save that for later. But you know, it's it's just going to be a, a transitionary process for the many many people that are going through huge shifts in the last year huge and that's i want to talk about that but you go ahead first i saw oh, I'm, you had something else. i'm smirking because i kept thinking about ralph klein and i thought oh yeah he was just in it for a little while and uh before you knew it he was in for the long haul and he <laughs> not only became the uh, mayor of calgary became the the premier of alberta and was so for quite some time so who knows who knows what the future holds for you dear sir well, we all just know ourselves and and that's where the intent comes in without expectation of course so who knows is the ex is is it'll be better than our intent right 
Right. But my intent is still to be in the food industry and in a major way. Like we're, I've been invited now to go down to Argentina after we get set up here and get our first project off the ground and then duplicate that project. Like we're going to just, we're going to take over this meat harvesting industry in Canada is what we're going to do. And I'm serious when I say that. I'm not even laughing. Like Cargill, JBS, this group, okay, us. We're going to take that over. I'm sorry, but you know, you guys had your crack at it and didn't do a great job. So we're just going to take it over. We're going back to raising cattle in a natural manner and harvesting them in a conscious manner. Is, so that is, that is there any room for inclusion of those companies if they're willing to kind of, you know, change their ways or so to speak? Yeah, they can do what they like. I mean, it's, it's, there's been moves towards some natural products and things like that already. I've seen shifting in that, but their plants are old now. And, you know, if they, they are, they've been funded through this old banking system funded, don't not finance those companies get funded. So they've been funded through the old system and that old system is breaking down in the consciousness aspect of quantum banking. So, you know, I don't think they're going to really be able to stick around. Like there'll be more groups than just us that comes in there and does that. And like I say, Argentina and Australia both have come onto my table in the last week or two. And I, I knew that was coming. And all of that process is inside here. I've been working on this for many, many years, this project of raising cattle and specific types of cattle for a specific manner to uh, provide the public with a healthy, conscious, nutritious product and consciously harvest those animals without this, you know, ridiculous notion of treating them like shit, you know, like, so people are coming, have been coming on board with me on that one for years already. And now we're ready to go. All it took was the funding and we're, we're going to be funded. So, so the Meralty thing is just a, you know, a fun Let's let's show people and guide people and forgive people, which is where we're going to go next. But I'll let you throw yeah. something else out. Yeah, well, for sure. Um, I mean, there's lots of ways we can go. You mentioned funding and not financing. So I know that you've talked about that in previous shows. Uh, maybe a quick answer for that, just for anyone who maybe is watching you for the first time. What's the difference between the two, funding and financing? Well, financing is based on the idea that there's lack and that you have to pay the banks back because they have money. They don't have any money. <laughs> your, your, your autograph and your agreement gives them the ability to create it or manifest it. You know, manifest is the better word because it's all just paper and digits and don't oh, push some buttons here. This guy's good to go, you know, yeah. but you know, the, with the deception and the illusion of debt involved. So that's finance. And funding is just direct, you know, neural activation. <laughs> you know, like these people are good. They want something that's going to be good for humanity. They're going to get their project funded because there's no limit to the amount of funding that's available. Whether that be the old accounts that are uh, off ledger that we've talked about many, many times. Uh, the asset backed accounts that have been held off ledger because they're too big to bring into economies way bigger than Bill Gates and all those goofballs. Like they're, you know, that's just, that's just on ledger criminal activities, all that is. But they got away with things. And like I say, Bauer used to say to me, we couldn't police them and you could, they couldn't because they're just, you know, greedy bunch of buggers that were trying to get away with stuff. And, and I'm not saying they were, you know, I don't like to go into the word Satanism and all that stuff. Like a lot of people go there, well, Maybe, but I think it was just greedy, you know, it was just greedy and power hungry and egos, you know, it wasn't much more than that. And is there some nefarious stuff? There always is. Humans are kind of crazy buggers. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you speak from experience on that one. I'm not sure why, but the, <laughs> there is a tendency to uh, that that I've heard, you know, through the um, through the grapevine and through different channels and things that I've been watching is there's a tendency to label, you know, that these are the good guys, these are the bad guys, there's the white hats, and there's the black hats, or the, you know, whatever you want to call them. Um, but there, there's, 
there seemed to be this polarity, you know, and, uh, and you mentioned banking a minute ago and you go, well, banking seemed to be put into more of the black hat or the bad guys kind of thing. But like you said, just in this last answer, you said you don't really jump into the good, bad kind of thing. So, um, and you can, you know, government is another one you could say you could throw into that bad pile, but um, you were saying something to me off camera, you're basically saying, let's, uh, let's shift that. Let's, let's forgive them. So what, what were you telling me there? Just, just so that everyone's sort of on speed with what we were talking about off camera. Sure. Yeah. And that's, you know, the, the, now that we know that the quantum banking system is in gear and, you know, has been for a while, but is really starting to expose itself and, and come over. We, uh, then we look at these people, you know, and we can use the example of what's happened in the last year without getting into the language of it, because everybody knows what we're talking about. All I got to do is put my <laughs> hand up over my mouth like that, and everybody knows, or just put my finger up to my shoulder like that. Everybody knows what's going on. So this last year has been filled with deception, filled with deception, and filled with simply fearful politicians, academics, intelligentsia, fearful people that don't know what to do because if they don't follow, right, their job's gone, maybe their, their whole career's gone, you know, their whole story is gone if they're a politician for their whole life or something like that. So how in the hell can you blame them, you know? Like, are there still a few at the very top levels that are deceiving people? Probably, you know, there's some stories up there. But even there, like, you know, how, how long are we gonna believe that a, a goofy bugger that can't even speak is the leader of the free world? I mean, how long can you handle that without saying, hey, wait a minute. And, you know, since he's been in power, since the 20th of January, gas prices have gone through the roof. There's a shit breaking loose over in the Middle East again. All that, I thought we had all that under control. What the hell's going on here again? We just went the other way. So, you know, people got to be seeing it and got to be seeing the obvious, you know, deception of this. Like, it, and and again, that's where I want to forgive the rest of the politicians, other than some actors that are on the television, a few top not nuts, you know, the rest of them are just scared. So, like, Mayor Nancy, I feel sorry for you, honest to God. Somebody said to me the other day, you can't wear a purple tie. That's Marinacci's colors. Why not? He seemed like a pretty compassionate guy. Maybe that's why he wore purple. I don't know. I'm like that too. So it doesn't matter. I, I feel compassion for him for being sucked in and doesn't, doesn't know where to go. You know, it's, and uh, Jason Kenny, our guy here in Alberta, you know, hammering down new things all the time. I, I went into a farmer's market today. I got to tell you a quick little side story. The back door is where I come from because I walk down and it's and to go all the way around the building's no point. And it said on there, please use the front entrance. I thought I'm gonna just see if it's open. Sure, it was open, you know. So I walked in the back door and I'm wandering around like that, you know, not not like this. I was walking around like that with a smile and teeth showing, you know. <laughs> and these people were looking and, and I and then this young fellow comes up to me and he says you know you got to do this and I said well no I don't I said I'm just going to get a few things and then I'll I'll leave and he says no 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 he said right now you have to leave I said yeah but can you just let me get my jerky here I'm, I'm just going to do that so I got my jerky and then he left so then I went over across the way and I got some cinnamon uh cinnamon apple uh corn chips and they're very light they're not heavy you know all oh, they're delicious and he came back when i was there he said i thought you were leaving i said well i just want to get these is that okay like just yeah well here's the paperwork and he tries to hand me this stuff and i said no i said i don't live in that reality i'm a sovereign human being i just i'm just trying to get some food and i'll leave that's all i want to do okay well right after that so then i kind of wandered off from, and i wanted to get some cheese but he caught me again over there. 
And he says, seriously, buddy. And I said, listen, I love you. I said, I, you, you got a job to do and I got a job to do. I'm just here to get a couple of groceries. You have a job to do. I appreciate your job. I know what you're trying to do here and everything. And I realize it. But I said, I don't believe in any of that stuff. And he says, okay, fine. <laughs> and, you know, it was just gentle. It was compassionate. It was, yeah, I know you got a job, and I'm just here to get some groceries. It was beautiful. And I walked through there, and, you know, I could see, because a lot of people heard what was going on, and they're, you know, the, the vendors and stuff. And I could see these little tiny thumbs going like that. <laughs> you know? It's like, how long do we have to put up with this insanity, you know? But have fun with it, you know, that's the thing. You, 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 I mean, my mind is going right now because there's, <laughs> a, there's a lot of things, you know, what, what I realized basically about almost everything you said today is that, and you said it, actually you said it early on, maybe not quite in the words I'm about to say it, but um, I'm gonna just use a term and it is a very new age term. It is called creating your own reality. And what I mean by that for anyone that's not familiar with the term is that it's based on the idea of whatever you think about and hold as the truth in your mind is what you create in your reality. That's how you see the world. Now, not everyone's gonna agree with that uh, concept perhaps, but I'm seeing a true definition of it in my own mind, as you're describing your life, as I'm looking back at what happened with me this past week, for example, like I get a chance to see you living your life and, and describing what's gone on during the week. And, and there's this sort of, there's this, this jovialness, there's this love, there's this generosity, there's joy. What I also got to see is that, you know, like I, I've seen videos of guys, even right here in, in the city that I live in, Vancouver, or as Randall likes to call it, Capitolano City, um, of, of a guy going into a Canadian tire store with no mask and was approached. And, and you could see the guy was scared, but the way he handled his fear was he became combative and defensive, sort of like an animal that was injured and is doing whatever it can to defend itself. Because first he was being, you know, they were going at it verbally and they were trying to uh, he was the security guy was trying to get him to leave or wear a mask and the guy wouldn't do either, but he was being combative and defensive. And eventually they ended up having to handcuff him. He was down on his belly. That is a very different experience than the one you just described with the grocery guy. And yet the situation could be conceived of exactly the same. So when you're coming from a place of fear, what you create is a different experience, a different reality than what you just shared with your situation. Is there anything you can share more on that? I, it just, like, I'm just going like, like, you know, I'm really starting to see just how important what you believe in and live from, you know, really does create your reality, especially, especially nowadays. Beautiful, William. I mean, yeah, like you, you shared a video earlier today with me prior to this online thing too. And it was Lori Ladd talking about, you know, let your higher self deal with it, right? And the higher self deals with it when you start focusing on your breath. You know, when you breathe and you just, your body relaxes, your physical body starts to relax. And so does your brain, right? <laughs> because it's part of your physical body. So taking that deep breath and saying, Ooh. to say you know like i lost you the, for a second i'm just going to have you repeat that last little bit you froze i lost you for a second now you're back so if you can okay. that last 20 seconds okay yeah just the the um taking a breath and going into that higher self like i say that's not just your body but your brain relaxes as well when you do that take a deep breath and then just live and act from that sovereign position, you know, that sovereign direct position, you know, like you're, we're not talking about government level sovereignty or, you know, legal jurisdiction or anything. Sovereignty to me is just acting within your own sovereign state, 
of being, which is consciousness. And that's, and consciousness is all about love. It's got nothing to do with fear. That is a physical state of, of fight and flight, like you just said with that other young fellow. So I do carry uh, a purple uh, neckerchief in my pocket. And I, I'll show it to you, see this thing here. <laughs> and and if, if I feel fear from them, okay? So it's their fear. And if they get fearful enough that you can tell that they're going to strike out because of that fear in any manner, you know, like they're gonna call the cops or, you know, get into a, a more fearful situation, then I am going to put this on here, you know, and then get the hell out of there. But it's, but most of the time, I never have to resort to that because I just resort to consciousness and love. I love them. I don't blame them for their job. It's their, it's what they're trying to do in the moment. It's happening. So, yeah. Well, the thing that I see interesting too, is that, um, you know, the old way that many of us used to deal with conflict is that we held our ground and, and you, you know, like I won't speak with for everybody, but I mean, the sense of it is that there was always a sort of combativeness. I think I lost myself there for a second. There's this combativeness that goes on. We say, I'm right you're wrong and I'm holding my ground until such time as until such time. And are you with me? I think I might. Have yeah. Left. Okay. Your video, now, I froze once or twice in there. So I'm not sure what, uh, what was caught and what was not. Um, we were doing really well for the, for that as well, but, um, for some reason, I think we're, I think we're still good. I had to, uh, I had to turn off my darn Wi-Fi. I'm sorry, I forgot earlier. So that might have been what did it. But I don't think we're going to have too many glitches there. I no, think I think we'll be. I think we'll be okay. And and what I was about to say basically is, there was the old way of doing it where we used to be combative and conf, you know conflictive, and it's sort of like my way or no way. I ain't I ain't doing it your way. And there was sort of this like automatically there's friction there, right? Because if both people held that same kind of attitude. Or approach, there there was no there's no room there for for blending or for being able to do something that you can work through together. Whereas what you're what you're showing me at least, or what I'm getting from what you're saying, let's put it that way, is that if there's respect there for the other person, and it's not about who's right and who's wrong, but it's just about respect and honoring. Is it really going to hurt you to put on your neckerchief for thirty seconds and then you know? politely leave and ease the tensions down. Um, you know, do you, any, any comments about that observation? No, you just, you just said what the way I do it, you know, like if I've, I've got one favorite little dollar store where the security guard said to me, he brought me over and he said, you know, I, I got to give you the heads up. Like they've been coming down hard on us and I could see the fear in his eyes and it was fear for his own job. If he, if he got caught letting me go past, you know, he's he's going to be in trouble himself, right? So that store, I went in there the other day again, and he wasn't there, so then I just kept going. But <laughs> the next time I went in, he was there, and I just give him a, you know, the fist pump and put on my little thing, got in, got my, uh, I think I bought some um, dark peppermint chocolates that day, and out I went. You know, like, it's not easy. It's not, it's not a, we don't have to think of it as a fight and you know there's there's always that big feed on the alternative media about the negative things that that brings up that you know emotion inside of us again well you know they're doing this or they're doing that they're doing this or they're doing that i don't experience that myself i don't have proof of it myself other than media which is alternative media versus the mainstream media, either one of them. I don't, you know, like, what am I going to trust that? No, I believe in myself. I trust in myself to function in this reality. Do I believe in following government rules that are silly and nonsensical? No. And, and from there, it's just, now I'm going to live my life. I'm not going to jump up and down and, you know, we've, walked in that protest rally and that was kind of fun just you know rah, rah, rah. but you know beyond that i'm not going to get up and start hollering at these politicians because honestly they're just like for instance william 
not one like you know jason kenny or or uh, Nahid Nenshi, this is, I'm talking Alberta because that's where I'm at right now, right? Calgary, Alberta. So Nahid is the mayor and, and Jason's the premier. Neither one of them would be able to say anything about how banking works to me. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to say anything. They'd just be able to say, well, you get a loan from the bank, you give them a down payment and you get a loan and you gotta make sure you've got enough in there to cover their insurance for the bank in case you, you know, don't pay back. That's the, what the television tells them. And that's what they believe. And they think in terms of that. They don't think in terms of, okay, how does a Canada create a bond, you know, that gets sold to the Bank of Canada and then, you know, create funding for all of this stuff that's going on that they're doing, like infrastructure, like you wouldn't believe, on top of all of this extra stuff because of this last year. It's, you know, they can't answer those questions because they don't know. They're just lost. Now, you talked about mainstream media a little bit in your last answer. Um, we also talked about, you know, forgiving the banks and forgiving the people in government for whatever transgressions we feel like, you know, they, they had to do. Um, what, about, what about the media? I mean, are we forgiving the media? Are we changing the media? What... What will be the role of media, how you see it? And if you become the mayor, how will you work with mainstream media? Or, or what will you try to change it? Or, or what, what will happen with, with that? That's another thing I think we're changing already with, with these algorithms. Like, you know, Facebook let us back on. So, okay, we see where we're crossing the line with you, YouTube. You know, by stepping into pointing the finger at somebody, right? So that's a good point for me, okay? I don't need to point the finger at them. I just have to say, I don't believe that. You see what I mean? Like, so so now that we've infiltrated, if you want to call that the media, which is this, you know, we're, we're putting out media right now. I hardly get any people share the, this stuff of mine because it's too non-controversial it's too caring and shit loving and all this freaking <laughs> love whatever kaiser get lost you know and, and partly because i have no significant proof you know i bought this tie but what am i going to show somebody a great big ring or something when i when the money comes through well i could probably show that we purchased a property or something like that that might get people to believe what i'm saying a little bit more on the banking side of things and the business side of things because people do want to see some activity, right? And some kind of 3D image of, of progress or accomplishment, I guess you could say. But, and that'll come, you know, like, I'm not worried about that. And if people are worried about it, then don't share my stuff, it's up to them. But, but the reality is we're creating it and, and we've already created it and we're evolving into it. So it's happening. You see, all that kind of language is hard for people to just grasp because then you're some kind of a prophet or Muhammad or you know, like the messenger or JC. Who the hell are you? Who the hell this guy think he is? Well, you're all of those things. Every one of you are, you know, like everybody's got the same capacity to create in their mind and add to this perfect story of humanity, which all humanity has to do is get into synchronicity with heaven, which is where we live, Mother Earth, and all the rest of the bloody animals and plants on this place. Humanity is the only ones that are off sync, that are out of kind of, out of synchronicity with that. You know, it's, it's all. Are you Jesus. saying, are you saying we're, we're finally, slowly starting to get into sync? Yes. Perfect sync. You know, like, and that's, you know, you got to recognize the weather and the sun and the moon. We've got a, you know, astrological stuff going on here. Open your mind to the big picture, you know, like let those things in, not in a, not in a religious manner, choose your own religion. The religion to me is just, you know, look after your own temple, this, this thing here, do that religiously, but otherwise keep learning, keep growing, keep believing in different stories only trusting yourself 
you know, because you're the one perceiving and then creating your little reality, your universe, your universe, Y-O-U, you know, it's, it's that kind of stuff that really gets me going. And I, and, you know, could I speak on a stage and be Tony Robbins and, you know, get a whole bunch of people going, well, maybe someday we'll play that game too. But for now, it's just trying to get that message across to more and more people asking people to share this because I think it's good material and William is participating and asking great questions and and pumping it back into me like I said I got a share video from of Lori Ladd just before this came up and it's speaking of the same thing you know take a deep breath let the divine you know um, higher higher self she called it let the higher self take control instead of your ego. You know, do you want, if you're going to fight, that's your ego. If you're going to be loving and respectful, that's your higher self. I keep, uh, I keep smirking today because there's just so many funny things that seem to be happening inside of my head. This, this is related, but in a way it's kind of not related. And it just, it's just making me cuckoo. I'm telling you, I, 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 this thought was, okay, what are, you know, like we, we've heard it said, and not recently maybe, but certainly, you know, prior to 2020, it would say if you ever were in a social party, for example, two things you never talk about, politics and religion. And here I am doing an interview with Randall Kaiser talking about the mayoralty race, and he's talking about politics and religion, but, but different, but different. I mean, it, we're talking spirituality, not necessarily religion. And you know, a lot of people can take, possibly can take offense to what you're saying, but something tells me that um, open, if, if minds are open enough, and, and, and I think what I'm hearing from you is that, at least in your experience of, of, you know, going around and connecting with different people in Calgary, is that there is a shifting going on, not maybe not just in Calgary, but globally, but, you know, or worldwide, but, um, I, I came with the question that I had in my mind was, are there, is there enough of an acceptance, enough of an open mind in enough people in the residents of Calgary to elect a Randall Kaiser, who is definitely very different from anyone else who, who's run for mayor before? Yeah, because when this stuff happens and every politician that's out there and including the ones that are running, how in the hell can they go back on, on, on their stories? You know, when the truth is revealed that we just went through a, a, a hoax or a, you know, a, a dreamed up story, how in the hell are they gonna ever scramble back from that? You know, there's probably other candidates that are talking like me, there's, you know, hundred and some candidates already. And, and it's, they say there's gonna be 130 by the time September rolls around. There's got to be a few more that are speaking the same way, but it, you know, the ones that are mainstream that have been in politics for a long time and have been backing this whole narrative all along, they're done. <laughs> they're done already because who the hell's going to go back and and you know say, oh, that's a true leader, that guy that was following some hoax, that was following some scam, is a true leader. We want him to be our leader or her to be a leader of this city. No, those guys are all done already. They're, they don't have a chance. So, you know, it's, it's going to be somebody that's, that's been aware of this situation from day one, which is what you and I have been aware of from day one, that there's something fishy going on and you can just leave it at that. If you want, if you don't want to go into the rest of the reality that's out there, just call it something fishy is going on. You know? <laughs> Well, I, I wanted to, I wanted to actually, you know, ask you, but then I'm afraid you might, we might get this video canceled or something, but you know, you used the word hoax and I'm going, okay, wh what exactly would be revealed as the hoax? Is there a way you can answer that? That won't get you in trouble. <laughs> well, we've used these numbers before, but 2,100 dead people from a related death. Okay, related to that thing mm -hmm. out of four and a half million people. 
Do I have to say any more than that? I think we could just leave it at that, William, because that's that's reality. That's or you know, is it reality? Are we do we believe any numbers that come out of the government? I don't know. Yeah. But I don't see any more than that. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't witness it. I don't witness anything really. It's not any different than it has been any other year that we've had a, you know, a flu bug. <laughs> Well, I'm getting the I'm getting the feeling that it's time to to wrap it up. But I do have one more question for you, sure. and then and then we can you know do your um, blessing to wrap things up. Sure. The, um, the thing I'm wondering is is how do you have or do you even I don't know if you can go there, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Do you have a an imagination or an, a vision of what Calgary would be like with you as mayor and what the energy and the environment would be like in the city yeah i i wanted to tell one more story and that really relates to it so i i go down to this one menswear store and i don't want to reveal the people yet you know i think there's going to come a time and hopefully they're watching but there is a group of men that go in there and some women now too i've been introduced to and every time i go in there it's like this I go into another world, <laughs> okay? Because these people are so spiritually enlightened, okay, that, that run this store. They have a little jug of stuff that you put on your hands, you know, at the front door. There's no screen, just that little jug of stuff. It's the same jug as it was a year and a half ago. <laughs> so the people that walk in that store, know what's going on let's just put it that way okay they know that they don't have to wash their hands they know that everything is fine so they're they're i've been introduced and each time i go there it's it's not even once a week sometimes it's longer than that before i go back it's just if i feel the urge and i'm walking past or something then it's like okay i'm going in and boom run into one two three and these some of these people are Philanthropeneurs, entrepreneurs, philanthropists. So there's three kind of categories there. Philanthropeneurs, I put into a category that is really cool. But the, and very wealthy people. This is a high end menswear store. And the, the energy that's in there from the, the, especially the one guy that runs it, but the other staff and the, and the people that are coming in and out that they just introduce me to them right away. Oh, come, you got to meet this guy. You got to meet that guy. And I'll spend an hour in there. You know, it's just beautiful. But day before yesterday, it was a sunny evening and I was walking past and in the front of the store, they have a flashing sign that changes messages. And it's got these beautiful little quotes. Okay. Just, you know, really nice little quotes on it all the time. And I was standing there and I was taking a picture of myself for my book. Cause we're writing a book as we, as you know, taking a couple pictures in front of that sign and I sent it to the guy who runs the store and just by text message and he says and I was about a block away and he says are you outside and I said I could be in another minute I'm just going past he says come back come back so I went back over he comes out to the front door brought his kids out to meet me and we just had the most beautiful little experience the sun was coming through the towers, okay, directly on us. And you can imagine downtown Calgary, there's only one little spot where that sun is gonna come through in the evening, right? And it's just blaring on us. We're having this little meeting. So call it what you like, folks. <laughs> you know, he's nuts or his head is out there in space or he's like a wrecking guru or something. I don't care what you say, but I'm stumbling into that kind of stuff all the time and I just love it. And I thank God for that stuff. And that's all I'm going to say. Awesome. Thank you, Randall. Um, we'll call you the cowboy guru, mayor cowboy <laughs> guru. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's all in play and it's all happening anyway. So we might as well enjoy it. That's the thing. It's happening, you know, and it being God in my mind, it, being the perfection moving towards completion in spite of attempts by us to to fall into a system okay and us meeting all the people 
other than possibly a few that are trying to lead the show at the top end of this thing. But even them, if you, if you get past that and say, well, they're just actors. So what's really going on? I can figure this out myself. You know, I don't need to listen to the actors and, and hear their story. I know that I live on heaven, in heaven, and I'm, you know, all, it's all around me. And humans are kind, compassionate, inherently loving species. That's what we are. We're not mean. There's some crazy people out there. Once in a while you run into that stuff, but it's, in general, people are just really nice. <laughs> <You know? laughs> ah, Randall Kaiser, thank you very much. It was yet another, another pleasure to go through the interview today. Lots of mind blowing things for me personally. And uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. And I hope that other people will get as much benefit out of it as I have, not just today, but from the last eight shows. So if you'd be so kind and generous to once again, help us conclude this episode with another one of your blessings, I'd appreciate it. I love that big sigh there, brother. Ah, oh, he goes, <laughs> the higher self just breathe and in him. <laughs> yes, my dear brother, with peace, harmony, love, abundance and freedom for everyone and everything every day on our minds. Me and William saying, we'll see you next week. Abundance, sovereignty, health, love, and euphoria. Keep euphoria. having fun. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.